ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ವಿನೋದಕಾರಿ ಪಲಪನ ವಿಸರೆ ನಹಿ ಜೋ ವಿಸಾರಿ ಜುಗಲ ಚರಣ ಸೋಲ ಚಿನ್ನ ಜೇಹ ನಜರ ಸಮೀಪೆ ರಹೋ ಅಮಾರಿ ಏಹ ನಜರ ಸಮೀಪೆ ರಹೋ ಅಮಾರಿ ಏಹ ಮುಲಗನ್ ಶ್ಯಾಮ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ನಿಜ ಹರಿಕೃಷ್ಣ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ನಿಜ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ ಭಗವಾನ ನಿಜ ಸುಪ್ರೀಮ್ ಓ ಮೈರಿ ದ ಪ್ಯಾಥ್ ಮೇಕರ್ to everyone's liberation our utmost dear gansham maharaj our dear puja guru ji puja santo and all of you bhakto jai swami narayan today's topic is uh, a little modern and something that we deal with on a daily basis without further ado Instagram, Facebook, WhatsApp, SMS, Snapchat. When these applications pop into our mind, automatically we're attracted to them. Just like how a little boy who walks into a candy shop is attracted to all the candies. just like how a hungry man is attracted to any food that is given to him in the same manner for those who are teenagers even right now middle schoolers high schoolers college students and young adults social media is such a platform that it is now becoming part of our life whether we know it or not just like how blood runs through our veins in the body more and more even kids in our parivar 6 year old 7 year olds 8 year olds using their ipad really have a keen attraction towards such kind of social medias and we want to see today that is this social media something that is helping or hurting how can this social media be controlled in such a way that it doesn't damage our spiritual life and also gives us a little form of entertainment that we are expecting it from so today's lecture is on social media as you can see here our sweet poison now social media all of you know but that term sweet poison uh we've heard of time in and out but what does that exactly mean for this particular subject now in the old times in our scriptures there is a example given of this world or you can say maya or this sansar let's put it that way <clears throat> or social life it is kind of like having you can say a dagger with just a drop of honey on top of it yes at the tip of the dagger the honey is sweet but while licking the honey it also cuts your tongue and makes you bleed even more in the same way that particular example fits into place with this social media form of entertainment as we propose it to be our sweet poison it's sweet it's entertaining it makes our time go 1 hour 2 hour 3 hours 4 hours many much much time yet in the end it's poison so we want to determine examine what bhagwan swami narayan's view is what the ekantik satpurush's view is on this particular form of entertainment and you're probably thinking bhagwan swami narayan came on this earth 238 years ago 
and there wasn't any social media then, then how can he establish any principles regarding the social media which just came out uh, 10, 15 years ago right now? Well, his principles, Bhagwan Swaminarayan was such a god that through his principles, he not only established rules for that present time, but the long, long future. And from there, the Shikshapatri was written by Bhagwan Swaminarayan himself. The Vachnamrut was spoken by Bhagwan Swaminarayan himself. And by Bhagwan Swaminarayan's verification, our Sadguru Nansanto wrote many, many scriptures that kind of show that this kind of Maya is spreading in the world. And there are ways to avoid it, divert, and become saved by them. So without further ado, let's get into it. The first half of our presentation is going to be a little more on the science edge, a little more on the technology and the scientist researching, all that stuff, so we can actually develop a perspective that is this good or is this bad? And if this is bad, then how bad is it? And if this is good, how good is it? So let's get right into it. So we'd like to start out with a video. Social media. See here. What is it? In the last decade, this phrase has gone from being completely unknown to being on the tip of everyone's tongue. This video will explain in three minutes or less. Merriam-Webster defines social media as a form of electronic communication through which users create online communities to share information, ideas, personal messages, and other content. Sites like Facebook, MySpace, Twitter, YouTube, Tumblr, and many others form the social media landscape and their rise over the last decade has dramatically changed how politics, news, and information is shared between people. Social networking sites such as Facebook and MySpace allow people to build an online, personal profile of their life and likes, friends and photos. This helped people to connect on an unprecedented level, bringing friends from around the world together on a social network. Twitter allowed users to microblog and post short updates on their everyday lives. Twitter transcended meaningless status updates, however, and became something far more valuable. In June 2009, protests in Iran around the re-election of Mahmoud Ahmadinejad led to a brutal crackdown that was suppressed by the state media. Using social media, protesters were able to get real-time updates from Iran to the outside world. Since then, Twitter has been used to break news stories around the world. From celebrity deaths to the Arab Spring, Twitter helped people get the news faster than the morning rag or the evening news ever could. Social media sites like Facebook have also helped to create news stories and influence governments. Occupy Wall Street protests were organized through Facebook, talked about on Twitter, and uploaded to YouTube. The SOPA protest blackout on January 18th was driven by users of Reddit and was a driving force in the internet censorship bill getting shelved a few days later. Social media has become a large part of people's lives, and it has changed how we communicate and how news and policy is formed. This globalization of culture has put people all over the world in instant contact with each other, allowing them to organize, communicate, and act like never before. So there you have it, social media in three minutes or less. From this video, uh, we just saw what social media is, and more focusing on uh, the social media Facebook. Um, as you saw that there are 6 billion posts um, in one day made by uh, Facebook account holders. And this was a stat a uh, couple years back. This is a, a fairly uh, old video. But from there, you can see social media used for politics, history, uh, crime, you can see even elections, so on and so forth, social, everything. It's becoming such a part of the world that it's kind of like, just like how we have our hands and feet and we don't think about, you know, oh, should I take my hands with me? Should I take my feet with me? Uh, it's, there is no thinking about it. It just comes with you. In the same way, this media, this social media, it comes and is, is it's intertwined inside of our life, whether we know it or not. Whether our mind is somewhere else, or, or we, we have our phone in our hand and we're always doing something, texting, posting, tweeting, all that stuff. And from that, 
is there any damage that's being done? That's what we want to determine by this presentation. So you can see that there's many, many mediums to this uh, social media. Now, we usually go on these sites because our friends and family members are on them and we think nothing more of it. In reality, what we're doing is since my friend has a Snapchat account, I, so I should also download the app and also talk to him in that way. Now, yes, talking to him in that way is okay, but the excessive usage of that social media, uh, whether we know it or not, damages us in many ways. Uh, but our firsthand inclination is that others are using it, so I should also be uh, using this particular social media. Now, this has been a uh, confusion in the human's mind ever since the beginning. What? Well, that person has those kind of clothes, so I should also get that. In high school, we see this a lot. That person just got a new pair of glasses, which are very nice, that came out. I also want that. I want this, I want that, that came out. All these thoughts are always storming inside of our mind, which is, you can say, a kind of disease. That particular concept of getting whatever we want according to the environment around us is not particularly proper for a satsangi of our Loyadam Parivar. Why? Because, yeah, if a Hari Bhagat has a new, you can say, uh, <clears throat> something new in satsang, like a new book that he found on Maharaj, Charitras, and you saw it, you can ask him, yeah, can I, uh, can I have that? Can I see that? Where did you get that from? Yeah, satsang related is more helpful, but something where your same friend got a new book, along with that, he also got a new phone, and you want that same phone. That's not so proper for a satsangi because we should look at our parents' situation. We, we should look at our uh, credential or our, you can say, capability of handling the phone, things like that. So we'll get further into it. But one of the diseases we want to cover is not to do exactly what the environment is doing, but we want to do what Bhagwan Swaminarayan and his Ekantik Satpurush want us to do. That's something definitely to remember because from the Vachnamrut, this principle is proven and whoever follows this principle attains Bhagwan's Akshardham. That is a guarantee. Moving on. But that's the difference between us and researchers. Now, as I told you before, we're going to do a little bit of researching. Uh, scientists talking speaking uh, what they say about uh, particular manners regarding social media the damage of it done uh, we want to know um, and our thought process what is it what is the thought process of researchers and finally what is the thought process of Maharaj and Ezekantik Satpurush we want to dissect three categories today so number one researchers dig into human behavior and their interaction with technology and social media. So they developed a science project regarding um, regarding this particular, uh, you can say, habit of uh, using social media. And they did researching and they found many, many interesting facts uh, which kind of have to do something with us for those who have excessive uses of social media. I will also define what is excessive usage of social media. We will also get into that after we look at the stats here. Are there more cons than pros? Meaning, are there more positives than negatives? First and foremost, the photo taking disorder. Yes, if you think about it, do we have this particular disorder? Now, this is just made up. This is not a real disorder. No one really has, a, there is no scientific uh, disease called the photo taking disorder. But to put things into perspective and reality, do we have that nature of taking photos of ourself, uh, taking photos of everything around us, posting it wherever, whenever we want, uh, and just showing it to our friends? Even if it doesn't make sense, even if it really isn't have to do anything with our satsang life or our life in general, just to kind of be like 
oh, I'm also here on this earth. Take a look at this photo, take a look at that photo, take a look at this post, take a look at that post. If we think about it, isn't this more of kind of like an attention hogger or attention getter, these social medias? Now, I'm not downing any of these social medias at all. They are good, but as satsangis of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, how can we control the usage of social media so our satsang does not diminish and we can also use these mediums to connect to God and so on and so forth. Snapchat is one of the sites and our iPhone is the best way to prove it or our Android phone or any phone that we have. We use these phones and first before getting them we want to check does it have a nice camera? If it has a nice camera, does it have a nice reverse camera? You know, the one that flips. Uh, how many megapixels is this? All these things we look at and then we invest in a thousand dollar phone or even more. Thinking about just taking pictures ourselves and posting it on, so on social media networks. Now, is this proper for a satsangi of Bhagwan Swami Narayan? I want all of you who are watching, think about this particular point. Is this proper? Will Bhagwan Swami Narayan become happy upon us if we post such kind of random pictures of maybe not ourselves or of ourselves or things and we pass our time through this kind of activity? That's a question definitely to ask. Nonetheless, Instagram is also one of them. Maybe Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook that we looked at. Um, Samsung phones. These are just particular mediums I'm showing you. Selfies are our favorite. Without selfies, our day doesn't go. Behind monuments, behind statues, do we want others to look at the monument or do we want others to look at ourselves? That's also a confusion in mind. If we really wanted to show others that I'm at a historic monument, why not just take a photo of the monument and just post it? Why do we also have to include ourselves in there? So, thinking about this very, very deeply, it seems that these social medias increase our de bao, or putting it into simple terms, us believing, meaning our atma, forgetting that whole emotion and believing ourselves that we are the body, not the atma, not the soul we are actually going into the whirlpool instead of coming out and that's something definitely that will not help us go to akshardham or help us attain the rajipo of maharaj and puja guruji and santo and bhakto so rapid growth now here we go with that research with scientists what did they say how did they break it down what particular facts did they take and how did they display it well from this graph you can see that social media visitor growth. You can see Facebook right now with 310 daily unique visitors every single day with different different other um, uh, social medias on the rise, YouTube. Now, I want to remind you that this is an old graph, but definitely an accurate graph. And from the projections, it shows over 600 million people using Facebook in the near future, which is completely... Uh, mind-boggling uh, nonetheless youtube users every one in four americans are watching something every day on youtube that this is an old fact i want to remind you but it's something which is accurate so i want to show it to all of you 53 percent of employers research potential job candidates on social networks over a third said a social networking profile provided they had lied about their qualifications on their CV. 13% claimed a potential employee had made comments on the Facebook page. 9% said, uh, you know, inappropriate, uh, uh, you can say post inappropriate photographs on their account. So social media is kind of taking over our life. If we can put it in that way through these stats that scientists have gathered. Online and offline connections. Now, this particular fact is something which is um, getting more and more, uh, you, can, uh, you can say, 
stronger or firm in the minds of uh, those who are using social media. I want to give you an example. Our lawyer, Dham Parivar Hari Bhagat, I'm not going to name anyone, but from this example, you'll understand. He's approximately the age of, I want to say, 70, 75, and he has a son. And uh, his son is married, and he has children and everything. Now, <clears throat> his father lives in the same city that he lives, um, maybe a half an hour, an hour distance of visit. But he showed me uh, when we were on Vitran, um, his phone and the text that today is my it's my son's birthday and this is how we communicate now and he showed me his text and said dad today is my birthday wish me the best jay swami Narayan. that's it not even a phone call he told me this hari bhagat this elder hari bhagat told me not even a phone call was made by his son and he also said, I, won't, I don't even make phone calls either because he doesn't like talking. He likes to text via social media. And this is how I live my life with my son now. Think about what social media is doing to our life as satsangis. Not even a phone call on a birthday. Just to text, happy birth, or, uh, dad, today is my uh, birthday. Please tell mom and give me blessings, Jai Swami Narayan. That's it, done. Now, is this the way of, you can say, Loya Dham Parivar youth or even a Hari Bhagat? Is this something that Bhagwan would like? May it not be a birthday, but for any kind of conversation, any kind of talk, even asking regarding satsang questions to one another, may it be family, may it be outside, can we not use uh, some kind of you know uh, relationship via phone or even physically he even told me something to add I haven't seen him in six months uh, but they only live a half an hour to an hour distance away and he told me I haven't seen him in six months but we text and maybe once a month talk on the phone that's it now it, it, when I even heard about this I was like this is also occurring in our Loya Dham Parivar. So then, what is something to kind of help deflect or divert the minds of our Loya Dham Parivar, Ari Bhakto, especially those young adults, to kind of take a step back and become less engrossed in these social medias and actually interact with one's parents, relatives, family members. And from there, by Bhagwan and Puja Guruji's grace, um, this was all landed upon and from there uh, all the research and everything was done by uh, Hari Bhakto and from there uh, it's in front of your eyes right now so online and offline connections let's see what that has to say a study from Birmingham, Birmingham Young University BYU was based on the responses of 491 respondents and concluded that teenagers who connect with their parents and social media networks like Facebook and Twitter have a better connection with them offline, they are also less likely to be depressed or behave aggressively. Now think about it. Offline connections versus online connections. What does that mean? Pretty much online is social media, offline is physically meeting. Due to such kind of social media connections uh they're likely to be less depressed and behave less aggressively what does that mean well indirectly it means that through using such kind of medias these kinds of particular emotions actually arise in the human mind brain and from there people become more aggressive, people become more distraught, people become more diverted towards the world and less towards satsang life, which is a damage for us. Now, this is a study that was done by a university to approximately 500 teenagers. But what, did, what message does this show us? Well, thinking about it, let's ask ourselves, I'm not doing this to my parents, am I? I'm not doing this to Santo, our Guruji, Santo Bhakto, am I? 
I'm not doing this so that I don't have to talk to anyone and deal with anyone, am I? My parents are so annoying, my parents nag so much, my parents are always telling me what to do. So instead of them talking to me, why not just take the short method of texting yes and no, and I live my life, they live their life, and that's it. I'm not doing this, am I? Let's ask these questions to us. Being Luedam Parivar Bhakto, this is not what I'm doing by taking sweet poison and kind of in our mind putting it in the backside and saying that no damage is being done. Now, this is a fact that scientists gave us and from there we understand it's not proper. What's something else? Let's take a look at ourselves. Love yourself, love your social media. Loving oneself here in you can say the world kind of shows a, a particular point of you know uh, positivity or something that we should have but what kind of nature or what kind of angle should one use in order to accept this fact that is given in the world love yourself love your social network now loving yourself um, as a satsangi is this a positive thing is this a negative thing is this what Bhagwan wants us to do is this what Bhagwan doesn't want us to do what is it now in reality loving oneself is not something that Bhagwan Swami Narayan shows and reflects in the Vachnamrut Bhagwan Swami Narayan wants us to love him Bhagwan Swami Narayan wants us to love the Ekantik Sat Purush. Bhagwan Swami Narayan wants us to love Santo and Bhakto. But Bhagwan Swami Narayan never says or has ever said in the Vachnamrut or any other scripture by Nan Santo that love oneself. Because by loving oneself, that directly develops such kind of Debhav as we spoke about, such kind of firmness that I am the body and I am not the soul. Due to that cycle of life and death continue on and on and on. There is no stopping. But instead of loving oneself, we divert that love towards Bhagwan, his Ekantik Satpurush, Santo, Bhakto, this whole Loyadam Parivar. And due to that, our moksha is fulfilled. Our life, our, our cycle of life and death will end and we will attain Akshardham. That is the end goal. But this is what happens. We love ourselves, we love our social media. And it's called narcissism. The art of loving yourself quite a bit. <laughs> and social media is the perfect medium, perfect platform for this narcissism to activate, rise, and become firm. And due to that, our moksha is cut, our cycle of life and death continues, and we become more and more attached to this world. So, again going back to the point in the beginning, are we excelling in satsang or are we going back in satsang by using such kind of social media? We should ask ourselves. And if an answer comes in from the inside, our soul says we are going back. Then as Loyadam Parivar Bhakto, we should become more and more, you can say, uh, reflect inside and slow this process down of using social media to kind of pass our day by. What direction are we going in and what direction does Maharaj want us to want to take us in? That's a question that we want to ask. Shikshapatri, Vachnamrut and other scriptures, as I mentioned, what do they state? How do they want us to behave? And what what life do they want us to live? 
That's what we want to discuss. Now, Facebook is a mirror and Twitter is a megaphone, says this university, says the University of Michigan study that explores how these tools encourage narcissism at at rather personal levels. Facebook is a mirror and Twitter is a megaphone. Facebook is a mirror of particularly, you know, I am like this, I am like that. It shows ourself and, and um, that particular platform, uh, it asks all these questions in the beginning for your profile of, you know, what you like, what you like to eat and, you know, what's your favorite quotes and books and songs and all that stuff. Now, from that, people read your profile and they kind of see your form in that you can say that's why they call it a mirror. And from that, what do they gain? From that, what do we gain? Is there any kind of benefit? We putting our personal life out to everyone to read. Is that kind of a benefit for us? Think about it. Nonetheless, Twitter is a megaphone. Tweeting, putting a post here and there about this and that. That's why it's called the megaphone. megaphone. And due to that, it encourages narcissism, loving oneself. This is the main base, uh, which is the poison part of social media, is that it causes narcissism to activate in our life. And from there, we become distant from Maharaj, Guruji, Santo, and Bhakto, and the Satsang. We don't even know it. We think that we come to Mandir every week. We think that we talk to Santo uh, 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 here and there. We think that we read the Vachanabrut and Swamini Vato and the Shiksha Patri and we do Puja and we have the Kanti and that's it. But we forget. We forget that we use all that kind of satsang related things and over that we wash it all over by using double the time of social media then how can we attain Bhagwan Swami Narayan's Akshar Dham? How is it possible? We do satsang related activities one hour in, one, in a whole day and we use social media networks eight hours in a day. There is no balance and due to that Bhagwan cannot bestow his Rajipo upon us. The Satpurush cannot bestow his Rajipo upon us. Teenagers who are on Facebook more show narcissistic tendencies. That's also a fact. Depression, lower grades, psychological disorders, and future health problems are just the beginning of using social media. Think about it. Depression, lower grades. Now you're probably thinking, I use social media. I'm not depressed. I use social media. I don't have lower grades. I use social media. I don't have any psych psychological disorders. And I use social media. I've been using it for 10, 15 years. I don't have any future health problems. Well, whatever we do, it's going to catch up with us one day or not. Because scientists have actually deeply researched different kind of controls, variables, different uh, types of people and have developed these kinds of, you can say, results. And depression, lower grades are definitely something that is part of teenagers' lives, especially those who are in high school and especially those who are in college. <clears throat> May not be social, psychological disorders or future health problems. That's something in the uh, long term. But in the short term, depression and lower grades are definitely two causes of using or over excessiveness of social media. So what do we want to do? What choice do we want to make? Don't take this message the wrong way. This is not about completely shutting and deactivating your accounts. This is and that's not even possible at this age or at this time. I will even tell you that. But Definitely lowering down the usage of social media is something that we definitely need to do. Instead of using eight hours, let's use one hour. Instead of using it all day, let's use it in increments. Instead of 
let's say we are we use 50 hours in one week lower it to 20 hours in one week take niyams and chaturmas even right now loyadam parivar loyadam parivar balls kids that are contact with uh, are in contact with santos who are the age of five six seven i can even name them moksha bhagat new jersey shriji bhagat new jersey shriji bhagat georgia so there's many many kids but i'm just naming a uh, couple that I, I have in mind right now their parents have given them such kind of niyams of only using social or social media you can social media let's say ipads or electronic devices for a certain amount of time nonetheless some of the kids have taken niyams from ahead that on ekadasi which there's two in one uh, two in a month and hari jayanti there that's one in a month that's total of three days so out of the 30 days 27 days i will use social uh, or electronic devices and three days i will not use it every day i will only use half an hour and on weekends i will use one hour such kinds of limits are being set by six-year-olds and seven-year-olds then what is it to say for those who are 18 19 20 25 28 so on and so forth who's more intelligent who will bhagwan accept more the six-year-old or we who are 25 year olds <clears throat> who are in past college and have a uh, have a some kind of a career who will bhagwan accept who will bhagwan and his ekantik satpurush become happy upon when puja guruji visits here in america parents tell puja guruji that my child has taken this niyam for chaturmas my child has taken this niyam for chaturmas and puja guruji becomes so happy but puja guruji on the other side is not happy about he says that these kids take niyams who are six seven eight year olds but what about those who are 20 year olds 25 year olds they don't have the capability of taking niyams of limiting their usage of social media so from there we can see that even the ekantik satpurush has rajipa upon those who fight with their mind and who lower such kind of usage now the cons let's take a look reduced learning and research capabilities this is more based on students because this whole presentation is more focused on uh, this particular age range of let's even put it from 10 year olds to 25 year olds through social media reduced learning and research capabilities um, uh, are activated in the human mind uh, our memory power our learning capability capacity all lowers because our mind is always running in social media it's it's a given fact multitasking that's also a damage because our multitasking capability goes down when we use social media it's just something that is proven by scientists um current scientists even right now nonetheless reduction in real human contact that's something that we just talked about by giving those examples of uh, of the parent uh and the child and no contact is being made now is that a good thing or a bad thing well for those who are born in um you know uh this era they think it's a good thing because they want to live an independent life but in reality they don't know what kind of damage is being done to their mind particularly and our hindu sanskruti our vedic parampara our puja guruji's vision is being completely bypassed and broken now is that something that we want to do puja guruji even says uh, our calendar two years ago posted it uh, at the bottom side uh, do bhajan with your family one once a day and eat dinner with your family once a day puja guruji has given this sutra to us now there's probably some kind of you can say uh, some kind of essence behind this uh, quote satpurush would never speak something which doesn't have any kind of essence but do we want to grasp the satpurush's words 
do we want to follow this eat dinner you know nowadays kids eat dinner in their rooms and do budget if they do do so on their own but our puja guruji is stating do budget and eat dinner with your family and see the difference of the atmiyata the uh, the bow of uh, you know oneness in one's family that will increase automatically because as householders you are supposed to live like that as santos that sutra is not for us but as householders definitely that sutra is for you that's why puja guruji has given it to you to use so why not take advantage lower grades lower grades are definitely that's a given uh, you know more focus is given on this particular activity due to that less focus is given in homework time and test examination preparations due to that lower grades occur that's a given fact loss of motivation in students definitely social media uh <clears throat> the motivation the strive to become a doctor become a lawyer to get a 4.0 grade average to get a 1500 plus on one's sat score um all these different kinds of goals that students set is definitely lowered the motivation is definitely lowered due to social media distraction so is it really worth it to screw up our future just for a couple of years of using social media with their friends well obviously there has to be a solution there has to be a strategy and the strategy is self-control <clears throat> you know Bhagwan Swami Narayan has uh, given beautiful examples in the Vajnamrut stating uh, niyams niyams meaning vows and um, if one cannot you know, uh, Bhagavan Swamiran gives an example that if one cannot develop such kind of Vedagya, meaning non attachment or Atma realization, one should at least take niyams and abide by niyams because niyams are borders, borders to protect one's life. Just like how the ocean is there, but every shoreline has some kind of border so that when tsunamis or high waves come that those borders will protect the land from becoming damaged in the property itself in the same way our protection is self-control we should know as Luedam parivar bhakto that our bhagwan our guruji our santo and our bhakto are not pleased by using such kind of social media which is damaging our social life which is damaging our spiritual life and which is damaging our academic life from there we should understand that as a bhagat i want to take a vote of only using one hour a day or whatever vote which is suitable for you and that's it i don't want to use it anymore you will have to use it somehow, some way, may it be for school, uh, may it be for some kind of project or so on and so forth, but do not make it your life. In short, do not become engrossed in that. Become engrossed in Bhagwan, become engrossed in the Satpurush, become engrossed in scriptures, become engrossed in Bhakti, but do not become engrossed by some temporary social media or electronic device which will not give us any happiness at the end. Do not become controlled by that. Have self-control. That is the key. That is the master key. Take niyams to please Maharaj, Puja Guruji, Santo and Bhakto. So that is our presentation on social media. By the inspiration of Puja Guruji, this whole presentation was developed. For those kids who are rapidly growing and rapidly having thoughts of using more and more technology devices, this presentation lecture definitely goes towards your way. Um, listen to it, abide by it, change your life so that Puja Guruji, you can also have Puja Guruji, uh, you know, here that Guruji, I have taken a niyam of not using social media for the, the four months of Chaturmas. Think about the Rajipo that we will attain by the Ekandik Sadpurush. And when we attain that kind of Rajipo, the inner bliss of Bhagwan, of this Satsang, is so much so that that social media usage will completely become 
down and it will it will seem like garbage to us so think about the choices we're making think about uh you know this precious life that we have of only 60 70 80 years i'm putting that at a maximum cap and and use it utilize it to the best of our ability to please maharaj puja guruji santo and bhakto which is our ultimate goal saying this my humble jay swaminarayan